Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. The high road. But as we know, this president is always looking for a detour down into the dirt. And today, he was taunting the vice president on Twitter with a message, Welcome back, Joe, and a doctored video pinned to his feed that has special effects to make the former VP look like a predator. That's Joe on Joe there, right? But that's this POTUS. Literally no shame in his game. But what about how Biden responded? Late today, a tweet of his own. I see that you are on the job and presidential as always. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to New Right Network. Tonight, your host, Brian Smith and Kerry Smith, giving you all the late-breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, exposing the fake news, giving you the real news, and making sense of it, because there's not enough real news uh, outlets out there. Uh, pretty much all of them dropping off like flies left and right, except we've got CNN, and we've got footage. What, they, they, Accid- become, they came, became real news? Accidental a random act of journalism, and the hosts are shocked. Really? Yeah, they, they cut to a lady who talks about the economy. And she accidentally told the truth about it? Sure did. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, criticize CNN just because it's CNN if by some chance they started telling the truth. Right. No, absolutely. You got to give credit where credit's due. And, and, the reason why I bring that up is because, boy, the jobs numbers are in. It is really good. And, and I'm not surprised. No surprise at all. But we'll get into all the details of the jobs report. Uh, we've got some, some border news. We're not going to beat up the border. You know what's going on on the border. Yes. Uh, so we just got some border news. Uh, some small confusions from people uh, reporting on what Donald Trump said, shutting down the border versus leaving it open. Uh I'm not calling them fake news. I'm just saying that they're not reading it correctly. Okay. Because I listened to Donald Trump's uh, uh, his uh, little presser, and it, it was clear as day to me. We'll get into that as well as uh, deep state news. Got some deep state news. And this Timothy Pitson. P- Pitson. Yes. Interesting, interesting development in that story that just broke this morning, and we have a lot to say about that. You know, Kerry called me before uh, before coming over for the show and uh, started talking about this, and I told him, I said, yeah, I remember seeing the article earlier this week. And folks, a lot of times you'll notice, uh, or maybe you don't notice, but usually our show prep is stuff that we're interested in. Sure. Yeah, um, I get a lot of suggestions of other things that people are interested in, and sometimes I take up on it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes you're just like, I am just not interested in this topic, and right. but I, uh, I, I think I may have convinced Brian because it yeah. is a hundred percent related. This is not just some story about an abduction or a missing child um, with some national interest and some drama. No, no, no. This is. Related to what we talk about every day on this show, and it's enraging. And uh, hate to hate to enrage you. Enrage you. <laughs> I, I don't want to try to trigger my audience, but it's going to. It's going to. It did for me, and uh, it's very uh, emotional when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, it uh, looks like we have breaking news. Yes. Yes. Uh, there is a video that has escaped from the clutches of the Secret Service, apparently. Uh, you know, motorcades, motorcade drivers, they they drive the limo for the president of the United States, the leader of the free world. And the thing about it is it's like a rolling tank, okay? Um, what do we – we guesstimated about fifteen to 20,000 pounds of armor on a extended limo like a, a Cadillac. Right. Lots and lots of very thick glass and metal. And um, – but – they get into hairy situations, so it's very important for the driver to be just like, top notch 
driving uh, performance. Just like state troopers? Sure, yeah. Sheriffs, uh, You see uh, local him do pit, pit maneuvers and yeah. stuff like that. So a limo driver might find himself in a, in a very hairy situation, especially overseas, where there's an ambush, under attack, whatever it might be. And so they have to perform evasive maneuvers in a, ve- a vehicle that is probably – very uncharacteristic in its performance compared to your normal right. sedans. And if you are over in Europe, uh, especially Italy, their roads are not banked. If you don't know, uh, our turns in America, when you take a turn, mm-hmm. they'll grade it and they'll bank it slightly, s- yeah. slightly mm-hmm. so that it's easier to make that turn. You see it especially on exit and entrance ramps onto the highway. Uh, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Italy uh, roads are not banked, and that okay. was a big thing that they told us when we first uh, were de- uh, deployed. I was stationed there in Italy. Well, it turns out, and it's it's difficult. Oh if yeah. If you're going down a hill, mm. fifteen twenty thousand pound car down a hill, mm-hmm. and you've got to make a right turn, no banking, or the banking might be the wrong way. Right. Not because they were trying to uh, mess you up, but because Roche. the uh, the the uh, water grading needed sure. to. Share the water. But not off on a tangent. We have video here of the training, training video for limo drivers who would be driving the presidential motorcade. Let's check it out. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) How fast is he going there, Brian? Oh, gotta be. Got to be somewhere around 150. 150 backwards for those of you audio only. He's in reverse, uh, drifting the track. Unbanked, unbanked turns, drifting the track. In That's re- got to be bad for the tires. In folks. reverse, yeah. You, you can hear. You can hear. He's actually shifting. <laughs> he's shifting gears in reverse. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's too funny. <laughs> a special transmission that allows multiple gears. <laughs> oh man, apparently they put they put video cameras on the front of this thing. Yes, make sure they catch all angles so he can review the footage. <laughs> He's still drifting at probably clocking around 190. <laughs> Making it through the straightaway so at about 190. Oh my god. I, I st- that's a special Cadillac from GM. <laughs> they, they, they're using a, a drone here to videotape that apparently. Yep, oh, look at this. This 180 maneuver. Oh, and he stops right on the line. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, High rise was... intake oh. manifold. It's, oh, uh, it's a doozy. <laughs> oh, oh, that is too funny. <laughs> Oh, for those of you that haven't figured it out about halfway through like I did. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. This this posted up oh by, by a follower and a fan of the show. Oh, that's too at funny. At U4Prez, <laughs> P-R-E-Z. Follow her. She posted it. I don't know where she got it from. But <laughs> well, <Go> apparently S- <laughs> Snopes <laughs> did a fact check on this video. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, Snopes. <laughs> Thank you, Snopes, for figuring this out. For, for digging deep. Oh, digging my gosh. Deep. It turns out it's a pr- promotional video for a video game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So funny. So you don't have to be a physicist to figure out that uh, you can't drive that fast backwards. In reverse is <laughs> oh my God. It's not multiple gears in reverse. Oh. It's just one. But here's the thing that tipped me off right away. Carrie, uh, a good friend of ours, Timothy. Timothy, Timothy Schwartz, yeah, yeah good mm-hmm. friend of ours. Uh, uh, he was actually the one involved in censoring uh, John McCain. Yes, out there in absolutely. Arizona, not censoring, but censuring him. Censuring. Yes, uh, John McCain. Somebody Very. should have censored him as well. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Anyways, no, but he he sent it to us in a private DM group that we're in with him. So thank you, Timothy. Uh, I I play a a game uh, on my phone. It's a speedometer, a tachometer, and a throttle. And a um, and a shifter and a brake. Okay, and that's all you can see. Okay. And you can switch different cars, and you can even drive a you can do a chainsaw. <laughs> what? How do you but, drive a chainsaw? But there's no there's no shifting in it, but you can make the chainsaw noises like. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So I was gonna say, are you driving? 
No, it's a sound oh, only. Oh, it's a sound effects app. Okay. Right. I thought you were like a video game where you're driving on a road. Yeah, but okay. you, so I can throttle all the way up, <laughs> hold the brake down, okay. and shift power neutral, p- p- atomic neutral slam okay. into first gear. Okay. And smoke will stop start rising up on the <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but but all the sounds, <laughs> all the sounds are identical to this vehicle. Okay. <laughs> uh, the for the last three or four years, I've been showing my son, and we've been watching uh, uh, burnout videos and drifting videos. And the first initial thing that got me was the smoke come off tires totally fake. Oh, okay, totally, I totally. Fake. I was fooled by it. Now keep in mind, I was looking at it on my little tiny screen. Uh, I I realized I was being fooled probably about a minute into it when I noticed that they had beautiful camera angles. One of which was uh, could only be done by a drone, right? Traveling at at least a hundred miles an hour, and I was just <laughs> well, like, uh, I don't think this is real. One hundred ninety on the straightaways. <laughs> In reverse. <laughs> in reverse. Oh, but I have to admit, that was hilarious. Good uh, times. Yeah. So uh, getting into the deep state, we'll just uh, get into this real quick. Washington Times, Charles Hurt. If you don't follow Charles Hurt, you absolutely should. Uh, a great writer. Also writes, um, uh, you find him on Twitter. Okay. But here on uh, the Washington Times, Charles Hurt. Uh, President Trump said he was not surprised by former First Lady Barbara Bush's attacks on him. Posthumously quoted in a new biography, and it, I think everybody knows that that now she's passed away, mm-hmm. and now a biography has come out, and she's not very happy. She, she uh, when she was alive, she wasn't very happy with Trump. And I don't think that this is new news. I think that we had heard rumblings, uh, rumors that she was uh, upset about his. Donald Trump's treatment of her children. Right. Well, not only that, but the Bush family, but they're all the uniparty. They're all the deep oh, yeah. state. They've all uh, been brainwashed to believe that one world order globalism is the, the progression we all must make. In order to avoid what we saw in the early 20th century with World War I and World War II. Like, the borders are the reason why we get into wars. And that's just not true. Borders are what prevent us from getting into right. wars. Right, and the irony of that, the conspiracy, World War One, those that conspired, it was actually because of the globalists. The original wow. globalists, they even name it, they, they talk about it way back then. So that's the reason. But anyways, here's from the uh, article. Quoting the book, I have heard that, or sorry, this is quoting Donald Trump saying, I have heard that she was nasty to me, was nasty to me, but she should be. Look at what I did to her sons. Right. <laughs> Trump told the Washington Times in an exclusive Oval Office interview uh, in the book, the matriarch, Barbara Bush, and the making of a dynasty. That's why, that's why that had to go. The dynasty had to go. Uh, USA Today reporter Susan Page quotes the late Barbara Bush calling President Trump a symbol of greed. Well, I guess if if that's what you believe greed is, well, is that being rich means that you're greedy. If he's the symbol of greed, then what is she the symbol of? Interesting. That's a good question. I mean, calling the kettle black here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess some people would say they just serve the country. You had George H.W. Bush who served in, I think it was uh, Korea? He served in Korea? It was either Korea or, uh, I think it was Korea. Yeah, it would definitely be Korea. It wouldn't um, be Vietnam. Possibly World War I, uh, II. I'm trying to think of his age. It's either Korea or World War II or maybe both. Uh, then he served as the CIA director, and then he served as the president of the United States. And, you know, um, I will tell you that when we interviewed Gary Byrne, he had great things to say about George H.W. Bush. He said that he was, uh, you know, just very classy, and he ran the joint Respect. like a classy person, respectfully, right. Respectful. respected yeah. the office. And, and uh, I, I commend all of that. But at the end of the day— there were certain deeds, certain policies, 
certain things that were done while in the White House that we look back at the time we were just like, hey, you know, this is what presidents do. This is what presidents have to do. This is what CIA directors have to do. And you look back at it and you realize how far we've fallen from our founding. Yeah. And you got to put some blame on some people for that. Right. Maybe they meant well at the time, but now that we see the ba- – it's like Karl Marx probably meant well at the time. Like, you know what? I think there's a better way to do this. And he writes a communist manifesto and people read it and people say, wow, on paper, this looks great. And they don't know that it's going to end up killing tens of millions of people over the next couple, right. you know, 150 well, you, years. You have the 20th century where communism literally is responsible for well over 100 million deaths. Right. If we could go into a time machine and go back to Karl Marx and say, hey, uh, just want to let you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You do you. But I'm just telling you that your manifesto that you're about to write right now, that you're about to publish, is responsible for tens of millions, prob- probably hundreds of millions of deaths worldwide over the course of the f- coming 150 years. Right. He might <clears throat> say, really? And he might want to know more information. He might be skeptical. And then I'd have to explain to him how it happened. And then... Uh, it's possible that he could say, and light it up and say, this can never see the light of day. It's possible. Same can be said for George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, who, uh, you know, some of his ideas and policies about deep state might just be like, uh, maybe we should go a different route. Maybe. Right. And, but it is what it is, and somebody should be a count. Right. And this by at Tom Fitton, just talking about the deep state, massive Clinton email investigation continues. New witnesses today, a top FOIA official in the State Department. Court wants to know if email system was designed to thwart the Freedom of Information Act. Judicial Watch already deposed Clinton Foundation official who set the system up. Check out the video. Just as Tom Fitton said, Judicial Watch is doing the heavy lifting that the deep state should be doing themselves. Uh, Got to give a hand to him. Absolutely follow him on Twitter. Stay plugged in with him. We'll keep you posted on breaking new information. And I really, really hope that uh, a lot of people pay for all the things that have been done. Yeah. He's asking the right questions right now as to right. whether or not it's designed to thwart for you. So, um, you know, the answers to that question are going to be very revealing going forward. Definitely. And so, uh, as we're saying today, t- today there's breaking news on a story that, that popped up over the weekend. And CNN reports, man found wandering in Kentucky is not Timothy Pison, uh, the FBI says, the FBI. So, originally the story came out. Yeah, so let's back go backwards here to the beginning because we haven't even reported on this at all. So what happened was is somebody in Cincinnati, uh, this is what the claim was. The claim was some boy, some 14-year-old or somebody that looks like they're about – around about that age uh, walked across the – one of the bridges. We have seven of them to northern Kentucky from Cincinnati and was wandering around and told a woman – that he's lost, he was kidnapped, he's looking for, you know, authorities to go to. He just escaped from two men that held him captive for seven years. He said that he was Timothy uh, Pitson, the man or the boy who at seven years old, seven years prior had been abducted or so it, so the original story went. As more information unfolded, we found out that uh, he disappeared after his mother in a Um, hotel committed suicide while in possession of her child. Right. The mother actually went and got the son. Okay. Took him, took him out of a a hospital and left. And I don't believe she was allowed to to do this. Okay. And she left and wanted to go on a road trip, went to the zoo, did some odds and ends, and then wound up at the hotel. Right. And uh, nobody knows what happened to the child other than, number one, he wasn't there when they found her body and they said apparent uh, suicide. Right. But she did leave a, a very uh, disturbing message saying that you'll never see him again. And so. And he's being taken care of. He's being taken care of by a family. You'll never see him again. Yeah. The, Not as that she had killed him. The you never you'll never see him again is is the key words, though, in that um, it. You got to wonder, 
what did she do? You know, right. but claiming that he's being taken care of. So it does lend some possibility that if some 14 year old boy were to show up one day, that it very well could be him because, as she said in her note, he's being taken care of. So he's probably alive somewhere. And one day he will show up. Oddly, um, it seemed like he showed up in northern Kentucky. So the news locally, this is something you guys don't know because you don't live in Cincinnati unless you are listening to us from Cincinnati. Or uh, our good friend Cheryl in Dayton. Okay, possibly Dayton too. All of our local TV stations started reporting this. I was one of the first people that you know that that was actually watching this on the local sh- the local news. And I remember my daughter sitting right next to me and I said, Abby, check it out. This is a crazy story. And it was amazing, heartwarming uh, that a kid that was missing since he was seven years old, seven years later, nobody knows what his fate is. And all of a sudden he shows up. And I thought it was amazing. And ama- imagine the feelings of the family, the, the, the uh, loved ones and the family members of this child that disappeared at seven, finding out that their, their, their uh, family member is now alive, possibly? Yeah, missing since 2011. So Brian will will put up on the screen right now the picture that all the local news was showing. And you'll see on the left that there is the picture, the real photograph of the child, the latest one, the best one that they could provide to authorities before the child went missing, Timothy went missing. And on the right, you'll see what appears to be a picture of a 14-year-old, roughly 13, 14-year-old, maybe 12, somewhere in that range, uh, that looks exactly like the seven-year-old. Now, now we know that since he's been gone since he was seven, that we wouldn't have pictures of him at 13 or 14 years old. I'm trying to remember, trying to remember the, my spot. The pictures side by side of what he looked like. Yeah, so you'll see on the picture on the right, it looks like a real picture of a boy. This is the picture that I saw with the red. I'll, I'll send this to you. Um, so you'll see that it looks like a real picture of a real person. I contend, and I don't think I'm alone here, that this picture misled a lot of people into believing that this is possibly a picture of the boy who they found in northern Kentucky. And this went around locally. Couple days, like maybe a day or two, I would say probably two days later, this had gone full-blown national. Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, they were all plastering this story all over the place. And they were plastering that picture of Timothy uh, as as a 14-year-old and reporting it as this boy was found. The only other picture that they showed uh, that was uh, reportedly recent was a picture that you're seeing of the uh, – the, uh, uh, with his him, hood on. With the hood yeah. on. Um, I believe that's a, a, a surveillance camera. Because he was breaking into cars or somebody was yeah. claiming he was... Well, that, that we found that out later. But his face was blurred. Now, I thought it was kind of odd that they would blur his face in surveillance footage recently, but not this picture of a 14-year-old. Now, when you look at it side by side, and I, I looked at it closely, I have children. And I've seen them grow up. I've seen my nieces and nephews grow up. I looked at this picture side by side without the benefit of knowing that it was computer generated, that this was definitely the boy. Yeah, I mean, it it looks like he could possibly have a calic in his hair. And then as he gets older, he may have more of a calic. The mouth, the nose, the eyes, the shape of the head, the shape of the ears. I said, well, this is definitely the boy that's depicted in the picture on the left. As an older boy, 100%. Uh, there was no indication that this was a computer-generated picture at all. Fast forward to today, this morning. Breaking news. Breaking Friday news. Morning. So if you haven't heard yet, you're hearing it maybe for the first time from us. There was a report that I kind of woke up. I was kind of half asleep, and I turned on the news. I believe it was Fox News. And there was a report of somebody falsely claiming that they were Timothy uh, Pitson. And they said it was a 23-year-old man. And that was the thing that caught my attention. I was like, wait a minute. Why would a man be claiming that they were Timothy Pitson? We know that Timothy would be 14 now. So what's a man doing? And they said, 23-year-old man. And I'm like, okay. And then they said he's going to be in trouble because he claimed to the he falsely claimed to the FBI that he was Tom, Timothy Pitson. And I'm piecing this together this morning. 
and thinking, okay, so we have the Timothy Pitson story. He's been found. I've seen the side-by-side pictures. Clearly, it's him. Now we have a third party, a, a man, a 23-year-old man trying to hoax the FBI. What's going on here? And then I found out that they did a DNA test on this 23-year-old man. And man. D- DNA testing, I, I, I don't know how long it took, but it seems pretty quick. Yeah, and let's rewind real <clears throat> quick, not to, not to go back and forth too much, but they had reported that the boy that they had in custody that was claiming to be Timothy Pitson was in the process of being DNA tested. And they actually reported this. And I remember saying to myself, well, I seen the side-by-side pictures. I think that the the DNA test is just going to be a formality. Right. I mean, I could clearly see that this is the boy. And so the DNA test is obviously going to come out positive. Now they're reporting that it's negative. And then Brian's going to show right now the picture of the man picked up in northern Kentucky, you see him there side by side with the last picture of Timothy Pitson from when he was seven. This is clearly not Timothy Pitson. I don't think you need to be a genealogist or any kind of a, a yeah, professional you, the anything. Ears, the ears are different. The chin is different. The nose is different. The lips clearly, the top lip is clearly different. Um, just the ear shapes are different. It's yeah. It's, it's just not different. even close to no. him. He's 23. This picture of this man looks like at least a 23 year old, right, right? As opposed to the clearly 13, 14 year old picture that they were plastering all over the news for the past two days. Now, um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I was not duped by this story, and I don't think you should either. I think you should do what I did, which is be honest here. This is fake news. This is fake news. The news media, I don't know where it originated. Um, At first, my first question was, where did this picture of this 14-year-old boy come from? Clearly, it's not him because we didn't find Timothy uh, Pitson. Right. So the 14-year-old boy in the red shirt, where is he then? Who is that? Is that a picture of Where is he? I started asking questions like, does Timothy Pitson have an older brother that looks remarkably like him? Uh, that's possible. I have a lot of friends. I've coached a lot of wrestlers over the years who have older and younger siblings who I would swear were twins that were separated and one sent through a time machine uh, because one's clearly older now. But they're like, my gosh, they might as well be twins. They look so much alike. Just the only difference being is the age difference. And that's what this kind of looked like. And I thought, does he have an older brother? Were they? Did they take a picture of the older brother? Finally, uh, what's also been hidden from me and everybody else is that uh, the picture originates from a uh, picture from a missing, you know, missing report where they have software out there that will age progress younger children to com- use a computer program to alter the picture, kind of like photoshopping. To make that child look older, they can make a. They usually do a great, phenomenal, clearly, shocking job. I mean, usually we're yeah, seeing it right here, real time. Uh, I would have never guessed, without there being a disclaimer, that the picture on the right that was originally reported for days was not a picture of any real human being, and instead was a computer-generated picture that was designed to make. The original Timothy Pitson right, picture so, look older. Right. So this from, um, you know, the, the, the missing people's report helped bring me home. Uh, you can clearly see right above the picture of the boy, it says aged processed. Yeah. The one with the kid with the green shirt, it says now aged 10. And the picture above it, uh, above the picture says age progress. So this is what the computer would kick back if you told it, I want to progress it to age 10. The picture with him in the red collared shirt, clearly done much more recently, looks like a, a, a boy who would be around somewhere between the ages of 12 and possibly as old as 15. So this would be even more age progressed. My question is, is why did the news not show any pictures of the person who was recovered in northern Kentucky? Uh, presumably, maybe it's an underage boy, so we're going to protect his identity, whatever. But then why didn't they make it crystal clear to everybody that the picture that they were showing was not of the boy that was picked up, but uh, but rather 
and age progressed using a computer algorithm picture, not even real. I, I'm, I'm contending to you that this is another fake news hoax. They did this on purpose. They hid from you that this was not a real picture. And they hid from you the pictures of the real kid that was recovered, who ended up being a 23-year-old man, in order to turn this into a national headline, to mislead you into thinking. Because what's news? Somebody claiming to be a missing child is never news. Right, but but then to be recovered. Uh, it's, but even then would not normally be news. When it would become news is when it's believable, like when Elizabeth Smart was recovered, when the one woman was recovered who had a bunch of children who had been missing for like 20 years. That's big news. Right. This only becomes news because they put the fake part in. And they can market it and make money. Yes, this guess, is fake news. Right. This is mainstream media generating fake news to get you interested. I was extremely interested in this. Why? Not because, okay, sure, they recovered a missing child that's been missing for so long. That's interesting. But in order to make it a real news story, they had to make it believable. The only way they can make it believable is by plastering the internet and mainstream airwaves with this fake picture. It's fake news. And it's just one more of the logs you can pile on to the fake news fire. Right. This one's burning. Bonfire. Uh, CNN, uh, obviously, they blurred out the picture of the the 23-year-old. Fox News did not blur it out. And so that's where we've got some I'm outraged by it. I'm outraged. But they're all involved in it. It makes them money. It makes them money. And uh, to, to the real news, we're going to get to some some real news. We're going to talk about some real news now, and we're going to end the show. Don't worry, folks. We're going to end the show on probably positive? the happiest news yet. You should have ended it with the limo driver. <laughs> we can certainly play it we again. We can replay it. For those of you who didn't catch the very oh, beginning of the show. Too funny, too funny. You're going to get some good news at the end. <laughs> but uh, until then, this at Heart of the Lion 7 uh, she posted the video clip of uh, Donald Trump with, uh, you'd see, Rubio, Marco Rubio in the background. Uh, and quote is, we're going to close the border down and we're going to keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. Uh, President Trump. We have right now two big caravans coming up from Guatemala. Massive caravans walking right through Mexico. So Mexico is tough. They can stop them, but they chose not to. Now they're going to stop them. And if they don't stop them, we're closing the border. They'll close it. And we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. Mexico has to stop it. Uh, he's actually backtracked on that a little bit this morning um, where he's uh, – sounds like he's not going to follow through with his threat on closing the border. I'm okay with that, and you should be too, and here's why. I don't think it's a backtrack. I think it's an add-on. But okay. go ahead. But go ahead. And, and that may be too. I just uh, – it was reported to me as backtracking, so maybe I shouldn't repeat fake news uh, if that if that be the case. Um, but, I mean, you heard his words right there. He was like, I'm not playing games. We're going to close the border. For him to not close the border after saying that could be construed as a, as a backtrack. I'm okay with that. But here's why I'm okay with him – Backtracking if that's what he did or clarify. It's not at all anything that would even put even the tiniest dent in the real problem. It's not a solution. And so why do something that sounds like initially could possibly be a solution come to find out it doesn't do anything? Why would you still continue to do that just because you promised to do that? So we have a pragmatic problem solver. We've been reporting that since 2015. And now that he's president, he's going to continue to be a pragmatic problem solver. A physical barrier will will prevent some of it. Closing the border. What does that mean? What do we mean by closing the border? We have land with nothing there. Maybe a little bit of a, a barbed wire with a little bit of wood the, in the certain crosses, spaces where, yeah, where you, you can, can just walk across. Jump across or even right. step over. You don't even have to jump. But, but closing the border would mean uh, closing all traffic, foods and services, goods going okay, that's to and thing. from Mexico. Okay. All roads. Uh, no, And I'm going to tell you, in Southern California, and pr- probably true in Arizona and Texas as well, uh, there are people that live in Mexico and every single morning— Starting at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., whatever it is, they drive to the border, park their car, get out, 
cross the border to work. Okay. And so then he go can back. Th- that's actually pretty effective. Uh, the thing is, is this doesn't stop the caravan. Right. Stopping people who've been doing that, uh, whether it be through a green card or whether it be illegally, and then they go home at night uh, back to Mexico or whatever. Uh, sure, that could stop them from doing that, but it's not going to stop the caravan at all. Uh, also, a part of closing the border would be anybody who does show up to try to get across through asylum or legally would not be allowed to do that. None of this applies to the caravan. They're no. trying to come over illegally, and that's what they're going to continue to try to do and be successful. If the only thing that Donald Trump does as a solution is declare the border closed. So I'm OK with him uh, not closing the border. What I am in favor of is continuing with the wall, increasing uh, the border uh, security. But as he also pointed out in – I don't know if it's the same – the same uh, press conference, but there was also as part of a press conference, him saying we have a system where an illegal alien puts his foot on prop- yeah, U.S. Yeah. property and boom, just like that, he calls up Perry Mason. He, he actually <laughs> right. called wait, Perry wait. Mason out. He said Perry Mason. And where in the world does any other country behave like this? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's not working, people. It's not working. And so we need to get more aggressive. We need to start saying that if you are a foreigner and you come over here illegally, you aren't you aren't uh, uh, able to get any kind of due process. I don't think you should be automatically uh, you, you can, subject to the protections of our of our Bill of Rights. Right. And you can apply for asylum over there. In another country. I, that's it. I think you should that's be it. immediately deported without any due process whatsoever. Now, there, now there is the case of what if you find somebody that you think is illegal and so you don't treat them with due process and send them back to wherever uh, simply because you think that they might be illegal. They would obviously be thwarted due process. How would you deal with that? I, I would say um, just make sure that they are um, – that they're not uh, here legally right. that way before you do something like that. But obviously, if you see them hopping over the fence towards our border, or I should say towards uh, U.S. soil, that would be probable cause to assume that they are an invader. I think we should start calling them invaders and uh, and deal with them as any other foreign invader of our country. And And I'm saying that Donald Trump's not walking this back because of the fact that Mexico – is going to get involved and stop these caravans. They better. They they've already said that they will. And Donald Trump said it clarified. Why aren't in, they yet? In the meeting, he's clarified that if they do not, and I know he said a year. He said a year. That doesn't mean that this will continue for the next year. He said he will watch and we will make sure if Mexico does what they say they're going to do within the next year, within, then we're good. If they don't do it within 30 days or 40 days or six, if they don't do it, then Donald Trump is going to take more aggressive stance. And again, physically locking the streets and the gates I'm almost from going tempted. in and going out is not going to be a, a solution like you said. Yeah, I'm almost tempted to, to – I'm, I'm starting to slowly get on board with Stefan Molyneux where you basically just line up our military with the guns facing – towards Mexican border and dare anybody to walk across and just open fire. Getting close. Uh, I'm not I'm 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 adding a lot to what Stefan Molyneux said. He didn't say that. He basically said, why would you complain about an invasion at our southern border when you also are in control of the most powerful army on earth? I am adding a lot to that by saying, okay, so what do we do? Line up Shoulder to shoulder across the entire border with guns drawn, that ready to fire. Right. That end uh, that's right. what happened at Kent State right. back in the uh, 70s. Right. And this by a good friend of ours on Twitter, uh, Emmy, at S-E-R-R-E-M-M-Y. Uh, her profile says, married, Vietnamese born, escaped from communism at seven. Hmm. Hashtag walk away in 2017. So uh, she posted this up about uh, Elizabeth Warren, and this is E. Warren's take. And I think what we have to do on our side is first we call it out, but then we really do turn to the substance. We stop giving it so much airtime. We just turn to the substance. 
We call out racism. We call out hatred wherever it exists. We say we're not going to be part of it. Why, are, why, for example, on immigration, we're not going to build a wall that is a monument to hate and division. That's, that's what that's really about. That's not about border security. The, the security issue that he's raising, this emergency at the border, is fake. The whole point of that wall is to get his folks stirred up around the notion of hate. We call it out. We say no. We fight it. She said something really revealing there. Did you hear it? Because it is a huge, huge insight into the thought process of not only Elizabeth Warren, but anybody who hears that and says, right on, sister, right on. (laughs) And that is that the wall is there to divide us. And I'm like, wait a minute. We're the United States of America. We are united amongst our 50 states. A sovereign country. Yeah. The wall is – I understand the idea of division, dividing between the right and the left, dividing between white and black or different races and and it being a problem in America. But to conflate that kind of division, uh, which is – obviously, I don't like that. I don't don't want – to look at a fellow citizen and think of them as an enemy, somebody that or like wall off California because we don't yeah. want California anymore. That, that's not. Yeah, yeah, I just I don't like that. But to say that we don't want a wall between the United States and Mexico because we should all be united is a glaring admission of globalism and and of the ignoring of the sovereignty of any nation, but particularly her own nation, the United States of America. She doesn't respect its own sovereignty. And and that's a very, very big takeaway that I have from that. Div- division, a wall between us and a foreign country is the kind of division that the Democrat Party doesn't want any part of. Why? Because they don't care about America. They, they I, want it to be a globalist right. one world order, basically. Yep. And it doesn't work. No. It's been a massive, massive failure. And this at Real Savidra, Ocasio Cortez claims without evidence that CBP officials on the border are deliberately trying to cage children and inject them with drugs because of their national origin. Wow. At least I'm not trying to cage children in the border and inject them with drugs. That's not a mistake. That is a deliberate policy to attack people based on their national origin. That's not a mistake. That's just hatred. That's just cruelty. That's just wrong. Is she trying to talk like a kindergartner? Uh, It sounds like she's changing her voice to sound like a little, little toddler, like a child. She, almost like she's uh, whining, throwing a temper tantrum. Uh, she's definitely like talking. Mocking. She's um, definitely talking down as if literally, we're, like we're she the put, children. She put the, the. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's that's way uh, like kindergarten teachers or first grade yeah. teachers. And I'm oh t- yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now. Some of them first grade and kindergarten teachers. When I run into you on the streets, you gotta work on getting. Because that's for the kids. That's oh, not for yeah. grown-ups. No, I get that in, in <laughs> coaching, too. Um, you know, you have to be kind of like a drill instructor when it comes to – if you if you have a child in football and you have a really intense coach, you see that, where they're, they're trying to motivate the kids by talking to them like a drill instructor, which is fine. And they are talking to children and they're adult and, you know, whatever. There's a certain amount of but authority still- you have over those children. Right. But when that coach talks to you – they need to be able to turn that off. Right. They, need, they almost need to be bipolar. And what she's doing is what uh, – she's been well-trained mm-hmm. to talk down because that's what Democrats do. So now that I see that the camera angle was as if she put it down at the height of the eye level of a toddler. Right, on the floor That this almost. was all intentional. Right. She intentionally – Wanted to talk to the viewer as if they were a child. So what she was doing was uh, drinking wine and eating popcorn while putting together IKEA furniture, complaining about how poor she is and how she has nothing. $175,000 a year, folks. Uh, $3,700 a week. 
Okay. I mean, it, I mean, IKEA furniture, they have a range, all right? They do sell cheap stuff at IKEA. Well, but but mean, they also sell expensive stuff at IKEA. Right, right. And she may have – I'm not saying that IKEA is the point here, but <laughs> the, the fact that she's trying to make the optics look as if, as if it is what it isn't. But, again, here's uh, another one. Uh, good friend of ours as well, at bud underscore, underscore C-A-N-N. How do you walk thousands of miles across Central America without food or support? Arrive at our border overweight <laughs> with fully charged cell phones and enough cash to get anywhere in the United States of America. Yeah, this is a, uh, a conspiracy. We are the anti-conspiracy theorists, but I think that Bud has uh, just nailed it here. It cannot be done without a conspiracy. Right. And when we say conspiracy, the people's involved conspiring together Mm -hmm. to make this happen. And it's a fact that people are conspiring to make this happen. Sure. 100%. It could be uh, billionaires. It could be foreigners. It could be foreign nations. There could be foreign nations who just want to just really upset America and really throw us into disarray. And they could be funding this whole thing. Even Mexico themselves could be like, <laughs> oh, the U.S. is going to really Fucking hate paybacks. this. Paybacks. Paybacks are going to hate this. Paybacks are hell right? for whatever. Um, and if you don't know, Katie Hopkins, uh, a Brit in the U.K. at KT Hopkins, a prolific uh, speaker, She's been a regular on the Sean Hannity show. Regular. She comes on all the time as a guest. Uh, and she does live an um, uh, alternative lifestyle, but that's her choice, and that does not matter. We here uh, on the right embrace everybody, and we always have. It's about ideology. Right. And that she doesn't – I didn't even know it until somebody said something to me about it. But that's the point. Do not wear your sexual orientation as your ideology. And she doesn't. No, and she doesn't. And that's why we love her. And here's her dire warning. Here's her dire warning to Americans from the UK. America needs to wake up to Ilhan Omar. She's changing right before your eyes. And there are three simple steps to the Islamification of politics. We've already lived it here in the UK. Number one. You have a voting block of people that are densely packed together, the same community, Somali communities, Bangladeshi communities, four families living where one family used to live. And now you have them voting according to their religion, facilitated by the mosque. Funding can flow in. You have the Muslim Housing Association. We have a Muslim Police Association. We have events, especially for the Muslim community of London. We have an Eid celebration in the middle of London in Trafalgar Square, paid for by the Muslim Mayor of London to keep his voting bloc happy. And once you have people voting according to their religion, funded by funding streams coming in from God knows where, you'll see the changes start to happen. You're seeing them now. For us, it means that we no longer have bikinis on our underground because it would be offensive to some of the locals. It means that certain individuals can no longer come to our country because we don't want to upset local communities. And it means that Asia Bibi, for example, a Christian woman, was not given a place to stay in the UK because we don't want to upset local communities. Once you have Islam in political power, your culture starts to change rapidly. You started this by allowing head coverings to be worn inside your positions of power. You've seen Ilhan Omar change from having this kind of modern looking, exotic looking, bright orange, how very fabulous, into now this darker, blacker head covering. Now we're coming out and speaking out against Israel. Now we're saying that the president should be impeached. Now we're standing by the socialist Maduro in Venezuela. America needs to wake up to Ilhan Omar. I think I have. I think a lot of people have. I think that the the outpouring of outrage against her and her ideology as a congresswoman has been... Uh, it's been out there. Um, so that's that's a good thing. There's good news about this. I you know, I, there's like all these things that are happening, these movements that are so corrupt or so 
corrosive and and evil that the people who are fighting against them are worried are they're losing that battle. And I'll tell you what, I think she's been very seriously marginalized. Heck, even AOC has been very, very seriously marginalized when she put together her new Green Deal. Right. Put it up. Uh, it came up for vote on purpose because Mitch McConnell knew, or maybe it was um, uh, whoever it was uh, that put it up on the floor, knew that it was going to get destroyed. It got. Uh, I think it was because it was um, it was forty-seven to zero with everybody else right. voting present. They, they just voted present. Didn't that even was, vote. That was Mitch McConnell. That's and, right. And as we reported on Wednesday, and I mentioned again yesterday on Thursday, and I've got to mention this again today. Uh, from from uh, some great followers, great minds out there that are friends with us, that, that are doing some great things on the YouTubes or, or the, the Twitters. This at, hey, it's Carolyn on 11-1890, the 101st Congress quietly repealed the mccarran Warren Act of 1952, forbidding Muslims from holding office. Those That's who voted, a shock to me. Those who voted, Joe Biden. Mitch McConnell, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Al Gore, John Kerry, uh, John McCain, and Dick Cheney. This uh, th- this this Warren uh, this Warren McCarran this act. Islam is not allowed in the United States. I'm, I'm saying it again. Islam is not allowed in the United States. The ideology is the opposite of ours, our way of life, everything about America is the opposite. And and again, I'll show you some pictures. You know, and the thing that's blowing my mind is liberals have for many, many years, since the early 80s, I think, all the way up until very recently, have demanded that any sign whatsoever of Christianity on any kind of public surface whatsoever be removed. That's why you have all the uh, the Ten Commandments being removed from all kinds of courthouses, um, Ten Commandment monuments, the, the stone tablets in the yards of the, you know, wherever. If it's on public property, it has to be removed. Those same people are have a completely opposite stance on Islam, where it needs to be embraced, it needs to be allowed, it needs to be uh, uh, supported in our public right. areas. This by a friend of ours on Twitter as well, at HM75015. Thanks for reminding us about female empowerment. Hashtag Paul Joseph Watson. And this is Paul Joseph Watson out of the UK. And for those of you audio only, this looks like a regiment, military regiment of women in head garb, head to toe. You can only see the eyes. And uh, they're doing their morning singing prayers. Remember, the Islamic headscarf is a symbol of real feminism. Uh, This is what we're talking about when it comes to uh, Islam. This is what we're talking about. And in the 1970s, uh, you check out some of these pictures from the 1970s of what women looked like and dressed like in Iran before the overthrow and the installation of the Ayatollah Khomeini. And... Oh, with that being said, let's get to some good news. Good, good news. Happy good news. times. Happy times. Secretary Acosta, year over year wage growth 3.2% for eight straight months. Year over year average hourly earnings growth eclipsed 3%. 3.3% unemployment rate for adult women. Folks, this is phenomenal news. There's a lot of people on the left that are downplaying the economic numbers that are coming out. Oh, I'll get to the, the down player and how goofy he is. Uh, But Acosta tweeted out multiple times all morning this morning, matched the lowest since 1953. More than 1.5 million jobs have been created since January 2017. January 2017, 5 million jobs have been created in this economic boom. 3.8% marking the 13th straight month of unemployment rate was at or below 4%. 4%. Remember, folks, we're under 4%, which technically is fully employed. Right. Um, this at Ronna McDaniels, 
She is a phenomenal woman. Uh, we couldn't be blessed with with a, a greater woman, uh, the uh, the chairwoman for the GOP. Another strong jobs report: one hundred ninety six thousand new jobs in March. Wages still rising. Unemployment at three point eight percent. A generational low. Thank you at real Donald Trump. And then I promised you the CNN video how they accidentally, well, you, they step in it. Okay, some breaking economy news. The Labor Department releasing the latest jobs report for March. Chief Business Correspondent Christine Romans has been scrambled to join us right now with a new number. Yeah, hot off the presses. Look, it was a, it was a strong number. I'm going to tell you, overall, we had a strong number here, 196,000 net new jobs. That's a bounce back. Remember February? It was That's been revised now. But February was something happened there with the weather or there was some corporate caution. But overall, you're seeing a rebound here and companies are aggressively hiring again. The unemployment rate steady at 3.8%. That's basically a generational low as for and so you can see cnn clearly biting their teeth having to report on that and this by the senate gop at uh maria bartiromo uh, the bottom line is this employers are still hiring in a robust way hashtag jobs report and this video by uh, Maria. This is a very strong report. It shows that hiring did resume after a little brief uh, downtrend in the month of February. Actually, it wasn't really a downtrend. It was only 20,000 in February. But now you've got 196,000 in the month of March. January was also revised upward to show a gain of 33,000. A lot of numbers here, but the bottom line is this. Employers are still hiring in a robust way. What I like about this report is that you've got growth in jobs and the economy, but you don't have inflation. So wages were up month over month. They were up one tenth of a percent. That was below expectation. The expectation was up four tenths of a percent. Mm -hmm. uh, but year over year, they were up three point two percent again below estimates. But you're talking about wages up on average over the year, about three percent. Here's the first raise Americans have gotten in a long time. Here's some of the numbers that we're looking at here. The unemployment rate did hold steady. That headline rate we always look for, 3.8 percent, still historically low. That's the lowest level in almost 50 years. Average hourly pay, to your point, Maria, you rose 3.2 percent from a year ago. That is what a lot of economists were looking for, because that number uh, was not budging for a long time. No, it wasn't. And it's not run away. So the Federal Reserve really zeroes in on inflation. We're not seeing any inflation in terms of wages. What we are seeing is a nice, healthy raise for the American worker out there year over year. We haven't seen that before the last year or so or a uh, couple of years. So you've got an economy that's not too hot, not too cold. The Federal Reserve looks at this report and says, we're not doing anything for the year. We're not going to raise interest rates. Now the expectation is things were slowing down so much that maybe they would have to cut rates. That's not happening because we see evidence that it's not slowing down that much. You know, everybody's talking hair on fire about a recession on the horizon. I don't see it from these numbers, Sandra. And again, you can't disagree with all the greatness going on, or can you? At John something or other, this goofball. <laughs> Happy to see in the news uh, today's jobs report, for perspective, this is a continuation of a solid trend from the time Obama took office, <laughs> not some sort of quick turnaround created by Trump. In fact, the sector he has been most focused on is manufacturing lost 6,000 jobs. Uh, that seems a little bit opposite. I, it's, it's spin. It's it, spin. Uh, lost. Okay, so, so if manufacturing's lost 6,000 jobs, okay, that's fine. 5.1 million have been created since 2017. They're not going to be able to get away with this. What was that tweet that you had uh, yesterday about somebody running for an alternate universe? Yes. <laughs> that yes. was a really good tweet. I said, wow, this guy ate some crazy knucklehead out of Ohio. Yeah. Never heard him before. As a matter of fact, Tim Sam, something. Yeah. Sam, Sam actually made fun of us. Said, yeah. see, see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You're feeling it too. Uh, uh, we never heard of the guy before. Uh, some some uh, congressman out of some place in Ohio, no, nowhere near us. I didn't know about him. Claiming that he's going to bring jobs back. Oh, he's by Youngstown. <laughs> yeah. he's a, by the way, I've oh. visited Youngstown a bunch of times. Yeah. It is as he described since the last time I've been there. I haven't been there since Trump has taken office, but I've been there a lot of times during the Obama administration. He was accurate. He was accurate. But these are liberal policies that have destroyed his city, and the things that he was talking about have been turned around by 
Donald Trump. So essentially what he says he's running for is going to support Donald Trump's reelection. Right. And the video, uh, Magic Wand, uh, the short version, got to play it again. Because some of those jobs of the past are just not going to come back. And when somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? There's, the, there's no answer to it. He just says, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. Listen to Barack Obama. Yeah. Listen to his words. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry man. You, can't, you can't get it. Those the are only, his words. The only way you can uh, reconcile that statement is to imagine, I guess, that Donald Trump does, in fact, have a magic wand. Truly, he does. Uh, uh, Don Jr. tweeted out and told us so. Magic wand at uh, Barack Obama. There you go. Good times. There's no way they're <laughs> going to be able to defeat him in this next presidential election. They, they're just not going to be able to spin the news in a way that is going to be believable by anybody. Right. Absolutely. And folks, you're listening to New Right Network tonight. Your host, Brian Smith. Carrie Smith. Giving you all the real news, making sense of it all, wrapping it all up, exposing the fake news every single day, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, check us out wherever you're on the Facebooks, the YouTubes, and on uh, Twitter, everywhere. We're all over the place at New Right Network on Twitter. At Carrie's handle is at Smith Radio, and mine's at Brian P. Smith. Thank you so much for all your support and all the Patreons, all your support. Uh, continue to help new news media jump over to smith.tv and uh, as you can see I, I just got this in the mail no, awesome this, 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 this. Go. Anyways, <laughs> happy friday uh, enjoy the uh, rerun of the limo <laughs> donald, Tr- donald trump's too fun limo and training too fun <laughs> and we'll see you guys back here again on monday but yep but enjoy your friday and enjoy your week have a good weekend You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com.